So we're going to jump right in. Uh, the title of this webinar is Bringing Interactivity to the Operating System Concepts Textbook. I say textbook, but we're actually not really going to talk about a textbook at all today. We're going to talk about the Xi version. So I'm really excited to kind of introduce this. I think some of you on the call have seen the Xibooks platform before. Some of you may not have all at, seen it at all. Some of you are using the Silver Shots textbook. Some of you are not using it at all. So we have a whole mix. So we're going to be pretty high level today. If you do have deeper questions, content-wise, platform-wise, at the end of the webinar, you're going to get a survey. We really, really, really pray that you'll fill that out. It's quick. It's only about eight questions. And that's going to be your opportunity to ask any lingering questions you have, any more information you want. Um, we really take this feedback seriously. As I get into kind of the Zybook story, you'll realize we are professor founded. So professor feedback is at like the height of what we do. We really take it seriously. We really want to use it to make our, our products better. So that survey is really your quick opportunity. Um, it's a thank you from us to just kind of give us your feedback so we can keep doing well. All right. Robert says he got his meal and he's chewing and listening. I love that. <laughs> So a little bit about who's going to be on the call today. I'm Kim Conrad. I'm the marketing manager for computer science. I think some of you might know me from past webinars, or I was even your sales rep in the past. I'm joined by Dr. Russ Miller. He is a professor of computer science and engineering at SUNY Buffalo. He's also a Zybooks academic consultant. So he does some work for us on the side, and he's amazing. He uses Zybooks in his computer science courses. And then we also have a special guest, Peter Galvin, the co-author. He's in the audience. He's not on the panel. So he might pop off mute if we have some questions that only he can answer. But it's just really awesome to have the author presence. The authors of this book were very involved in the Xi version creation, as we're going to get in and see. They helped with animations, um, authoring the specific feedback that students get from learning questions, et cetera. So we're excited to have that involvement. So a little background, like I said, I think about 50% of you are not familiar with Zybooks at all. So we're just gonna get everybody caught up. So Zybooks is a professor founded company. Dr. Frank Vahid down here in the right corner is uh, one of our co-founders. He is a professor of computer science, still is a professor of computer science at University of California, Riverside. And several years ago, he started to notice a shift in his students that were not coming to class prepared. They were not, buying their textbook, let alone reading the textbook before class, and he had to do something about it. So he saw this opportunity with the internet and with technology to really create a more interactive experience for the student. So him and his PhD students created the first ever Zybook, then they par partnered with Smita and created the Zybooks company, and it worked. If you see at the bottom, student performance went up, the least prepared students went up drastically, and student letter grades, confidence, everything. So then it expanded. And then in 2019, Wiley Publishing decided to acquire Zybooks, which is really exciting. And in 2020, we started to take the Wiley content, engineering and computer science, all these amazing textbooks and put it into the Zybooks platform. 2021, the first computer science Zy version was created. And this year, 2022, we have five computer, cybers, computer science Zy versions being released. So we'll kind of talk about what a Zybook is versus a Zy version, but just a little background on how we got to where we are today. So if you're familiar with Zy books, you'll know our kind of our slogan is less text, more action. Now with Zy versions, our slogan is going to be same text, more action. So we're taking the exact same text as this book on the left and putting it into our platform on the right. So we kept our dinosaur friend. It's gonna be the same chapters, same content, but more interactives, more auto-graded learning questions, more features for you to hold students accountable. And we're gonna get into that in the demo. But if you're already using the book, I just wanna reiterate, this is not a heavy lift for you at all. It is not a change. You can use your same PowerPoints. You can use your same lecture notes. It is exactly the same content. David said he likes, is there going to be a dinosaur on the cover? Yes, there is. We can't get rid of the dinosaur. <laughs> so why are we doing this? I'm going to take you all on a little story. If you've been on a webinar with me before, you kind of know my background. I was actually a teacher in a past life. And this picture kind of represents what I thought teaching was going to be like, right? I thought 
I was going to go into my classroom every day and my students were going to just be thrilled to talk to me and they were going to read their To Kill a Mockingbird chapters and we were going to come into class and have these insightful discussions and it it didn't end up like that at all. I thought this was going to be how my classroom was. This was more how my classroom was. I mean, it was I was shocked. My students were not reading anything, let alone engaging or getting excited in the classroom. And for many, many other reasons, I left teaching. I started in publishing. I was a sales rep and I went all over the country visiting professors in all different disciplines at all different campuses from community college to Ivy League. And they were all telling me the same thing. My students aren't reading. They're not buying their books. They're not coming to class ready to talk. So that made me feel better, right? I wasn't just a failure as a teacher. <laughs> and it's not every student, it's not every campus, and it's not every class, but the majority of people were echoing what I had experienced in their classrooms. So that is what Frank experienced too, our co-founder. And our goal here is that, and you can literally close your eyes right now if you want, because you're on Zoom and we can't see you, <laughs> but I want you to think about a classroom full of prepared, and engaged students. Have they mastered the content? Absolutely not. But have they at least put eyes on the content before they come to your classroom? Yes. And like what a difference that can make to bring them all up to the same level. So that's the goal with the Zy version. And we're going to get into kind of how to do that. But when I say this stuff, I want you to know this is actually possible. This is not a pipe dream. So this is a, a screenshot from the actual Zy version we're going to get into. But the Zy version and the Zybooks platform gives you so much insight to what they're doing. So this is the example I like to give. You have assigned these participation activities before class. Russ is going to show you exactly what I mean when I say that. And you're walking in and you're lecturing today about CPU scheduling. You can open up your grade book and feel confident that your students have done 95% of the reading before class. They've actually watched animations. They've quizzed themselves on some questions. They've spent time in the book. That is a huge game changer from probably 30% that was doing it before. And these are the types of analytics that you can't get from a textbook. You can't get from a typical ebook. So this is a really exciting part. We also have some deeper analytics that Russ can show time on task by class or by student, how many attempts they're doing as much information as you'd wanna know. Again, you don't get that from a typical textbook. And then a huge part of the Zybooks platform is the customization. I love textbooks, right? Books are great, but there's not ever gonna be a perfect textbook for every single person's course. So this allows you to rearrange chapters, hide content you don't wanna use, rename chapters, and add your own content with checked questions to make sure they're actually looking at it. So we're going to show you both of this, but this is essentially a custom textbook without the custom price tag. You have the ability to do this in a moment too. Any changes you make are instantly pushed to your students. So Russ is going to talk to you how he does that. He takes advantage of this in his class, but it is a huge game changer for your course specifically. And then it works, right? So we, Frank Bahid spent all this time doing research as one would do if you're a PhD and a professor. And he was so happy with the outcomes and the proven results. And that's why we're so excited to keep this going. So this is one of our research page. Um, our research page is zybooks.com slash research. There's tons of stuff to look into, but this is the one that I really wanna hone in on before we get into the demo is to have these results, to experience this engaged classroom, you have to assign the Xi version for scores, for points. So this is a study we did on where is the sweet spot to assign these points so that students actually do it and they do it earnestly. It's not too much, it's not 50% of their grades, so they're tempted to cheat, but it's not 1% that they can easily not do it and still do well. So we found that sweet spot to be between five and 10%. So right, Russ is going to talk about how that's that's a great motivator for students and they learn really quickly. If I just sit down each week and spend some time in my book, I can go from a C to a B or a D to a C, right? I can earn those points. They think they're just accomplishing that task. We know that's going to trickle to other parts of the course. 
we know if they sit down and spend time in the book, they're going to be better in class. They're going to do better on projects. They're going to do better on exams. So it's a really simple tweak, but it does have to be assigned. Our research has shown four points to kind of see the results that we're hoping to see. So we're going to hop into the demo. I saw a lot going on in the chat, so I'll answer those questions. Does anyone have any just overall questions that I can answer before we hop right into the real deal. Let me see, anybody? Um, got my meal. Very pleased that this conversion has happened. Yay, there is a dinosaur on the cover. It's always the dinosaur book, that's great. Our internal sales team loved the dinosaur. So. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I asked my students why we have a dinosaur on the cover page and no one could answer. I don't actually know the answer to that. Original Zybooks lack enough text. So I love that comment. Um, we are now exploring multiple options for different course areas, which is really exciting for us. So we do actually have an operating system Zybook. If that method interests anyone, it is the less text more action and now we have this full text of a textbook so whichever suits your teaching style and your students and your campus we're, we're really broadening our offerings which is really exciting oh peter says you can check out the website oh peter you're here <laughs> um okay so i'm going to pass it over to russ if i see any other questions i'll answer them in the chat but i don't want to waste any time so russ take it away Thank you, Kim. I need access. There we go. All right. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending. As Kim mentioned, there are two operating systems books uh, available for those who have used Zybooks before. The traditional operating systems book written by the oper written by the Zybooks folks is available with both participation and challenge activities. Again, people who've used iBooks know what that means. Uh, the Silver Shots book, which is just, you know, this huge, wonderful, you know, uh, obscenely widely adopted book, kind of a standard in operating systems. Uh, this has just moved over from Wiley into this iBooks platform. So the book is here as is, okay, as you are used to, like Peter said, there've been a few enhancements here and there uh, to some of the sections, but for all intents and purposes, this is the Silver Shots book that everybody is used to. The difference is there's a Zybooks format placed on it, meaning that you have the ability to tailor the book in a dynamic fashion to how you like to teach it. So you can go through, I do it Saturday mornings, go through every Saturday, whenever you want, figure out what you want to do next week, move around chapters, sections, delete stuff, put in new material of your own, put in commentary on sections that's in the Silver Shots book and so on. Okay, you also have the ability to make sure, and I say that in a loving way, kind of force your students to read before lectures. So me, I teach Tuesdays, Thursdays. I make sure that my students are at least putting their eyes on the book every week before my first lecture of the week. So for example, if I go and look at some section here in the book, this is the standard book. And this is the book. When, when I talk about the book, I mean, I mean this digital version of the book. Students can keep a PDF of the book and they can keep that forever as a reference. So along with whatever the charge is for students to use this book, comes the ability to save it as a PDF. And look, for most of us, we know that our students aren't reading anything in hard copy anymore. Not reading newspapers, magazines, whatever. Everything that they read is on their laptop. So the nice thing here is they get to work on the class in a live version of a book, and then they get to save PDFs that they keep as a reference forever. But these books have now interspersed in them, these so-called participation activities, these reading problems, which have been contributed by the authors, okay, which is a big deal. So these problems are now in here to help disambiguate, to help enhance material in the book that the authors think could use some assistance from a student's point of view. They're all interactive, so the students can do them on their laptops, tablets, cell phones, whatever, 
and students cannot get them wrong. Okay, so there's no way to get any of these participation activities wrong. From a student's point of view, these are sweat equity. From our point of view as faculty, they give us the assurance that the student is at least putting their eyes on the book. And by not being able to get it wrong, I mean that a student can't go through an animation and get it wrong. There's, there's nothing to get right here. So th this is a popular book, even though it just came out. I've used it a lot, talked to a lot of folks about it. All right. Uh, this would have started out this orange check mark as a gray box here. And I think I've got maybe some problem down here. Uh, it has got a gray box. Okay. So when the student gets the book, all of these problems have gray boxes at the start of it. And when the student finishes a problem, finishes an animation, it will turn into this orange check mark. And that orange check mark lets the student know they've been through the problem. I know they've been through the problem. And more importantly to them, they're going to get the points I am bribing them with to do these problems prior to my lectures. Okay, and so I'm on the high end, as Kim mentioned, the five to 10 point range. I give my students 10% of their final grade for doing these readings, putting their eyes on the page, doing these participation activities prior to my lectures. And then I'm able to lecture during the week. I don't have to use all the examples in the book. I can use my own examples. I can mentor them. I can change things around. Some of us talk about it as being a flipped class or not. I don't want to get into the technicalities there, but it does free me up to be able to work a lot closer, a lot more independently with the students as a class, rather than if the first time they're seeing material is in class, and then the second time they're trying to figure out what they didn't understand by either going to office hours, or maybe the textbook, or maybe some of us have prepared slides or use prepared slides that come with a book, okay? So the way I want to teach, the way you know I've liked teaching that's been most effective for my students historically is for them to read first, right? And for the second time they see the material to be in my lectures. So these problems allow me to do that. And there's four types of problems. There's these animations that we've seen. There are some multiple choice problems. Now, the multiple choice problems these are radio button problems. So we all know, and the students know, that they can just go click, click, click. One of those answers was right. They're going to get their credit. And my students do this the first week. They just try and game the system. I tell them that they can't get them wrong. They don't trust me, right? So they just go click, click, click. They're not even looking at the problem. Doesn't matter. They get their credit, right? But the second week and thereafter, my students tell me they go through they look at a problem, they try and get it right because, you know, there's no stress in their lives, right? They've exhaled these problems, they know they're going to get right. So they'll go through, they'll try and get it right. They'll look, they'll see, did they get it right for the right reason? And then what my students tell me, I've been using these books for about seven years, and it kind of amazed me is my students tell me, and I teach large classes, so it's not statistics of small numbers, okay? They tell me they go through the wrong answers. Okay, after they've got it right, and make sure they understand these problems as well. So they're learning from the right answers, they're learning from the wrong answers, they're at least getting engaged in the book. Okay, as Kim mentioned in this reporting function, I can keep tabs and see are my students reading? Well, of course they are, right? I'm giving my students a lot of points for free from their point of view, right? 10% of their final grade, which from their point of view is a full letter grade, right? for doing these problems. But I can see and I can drill down and I can see, are they reading? Didn't they read? Why didn't they read? Well, you know, was there a Super Bowl last weekend? Was there a big, you know, tournament on campus, the NCAA tournament our team was on, whatever. So I can look and see at any point, see how my students are doing, see if they're reading, see if there are any problems. And with this view analytics button, I also have the ability to see where my students are generally spending their time in the book and how much effort they're spending on any of these problems, right? Let me pull up a different book that's seated with a lot more students than the five students you'll all see in 
uh, in your evaluation copy. So here under this view analytics tab, I can pull up the material and I can look and see here, here's the first four weeks of a course I taught a year and change ago. And if I mouse over, I can see that my students spent two hours, 14 minutes and change doing those reading problems that they can't get wrong, it's participation activities in chapter one. How much time in chapter two, chapter three? How much time any day during the semester? I can see this material for my entire class. I can see it for individual students. It's real student data, fake student names, in case you don't need to worry about that. I can drill down and see section by section by section, how much time they spent. I can drill down and see problem by problem by problem. Some of you who have used Zybooks before understand that these are challenge activities and I can see these are auto graded homework problems that students may or may not get right. And I can see how many attempts they took before they either got it right or gave up. Okay, the participation activities, I can see how many attempts they may have taken, okay, but we know they got these right, just can't get these problems wrong. All right, so this helps me being able to look at the entire class, being able to look at individual students. It's made a market improvement in how effective I'm able to utilize my office hours because where a student like Chase, a fake name, may previously have come into my office saying, hey, professor, I'm lost. I spent 30 hours last week and I don't get it. Okay, where, yeah, we all know he didn't spend 30 hours, maybe spent three or four. But if a student's telling me that they spent three or four hours and don't understand something, and I wanna get them back on track, we may you know, take one tack to go get there, where if now a student knows that I can say to Chase, no, no, dude, look, you spent 14 minutes and change last week. I show this to my students in the aggregate format of this. And now my students come in, they're just completely honest with me. They say, I was a professor. I was good for the first seven weeks last week. I had midterms, I was sick, I've had family issues, whatever. Didn't do any work, went to today's lecture and I'm lost. Okay, so now I have a student who I know didn't even try to learn it for whatever reason. And I can work with them to get up to task. I can also take a look at this material come end of the semester. I'm trying to figure out if some students between a B plus, A minus, whatever it may be, and see how much effort they put in during the semester. Okay, so this is very nice. As Kim has said, my students using these books, which I've been using for the past seven years, they now work up to their potential. So my B minus students now get B minuses, which is very nice at the end of the semester. They don't mentally check out those first two weeks and then either remember to withdraw, forget to withdraw, get a D or an F, right? So they're invested in the book because I'm throwing 10% at them because there's material for them to do. Now they're coming to office hours, going to see my TAs and so on and getting involved in the book, right? To, so to assign the material, it's really simple, right? I'll show you a bunch of little stuff in you know, the next 10 or so minutes. Um, but what you need to do is just use this assignments tab to be able to utilize these books as they were designed. So if I hit this add button, I can tell my students say the first week of class, I need you to do some of these reading problems, these participation activities, these preparatory activities. Before the first day of class, say next Tuesday, 9.30 in the morning, so say at nine in the morning, I want my students to have read all of chapter one. And yeah, I, again, I know I'm going through this quickly, right? For those who decide they wanna see more, or whatever, we can set up one-on-ones and take our time going through all this. I'm just trying to, again, in, in 15, 20 minutes, just show you some highlights. And I know I'm working with an audience of, Zybooks users and people who've never used it and so on. Okay, so I will give my students at the beginning of the semester, I'll send them an e-blast, say, look, here, go get the book. You can see in the assignments tab that you have some work due before the first day of class. Go do these problems. You can't get them wrong. Don't sweat it. And by the way, this material is going to count for 10% of your final grade in the aggregate. And in fact, what I actually do, I take advantage of this configure tab, this configure button here, which allows me to move around, relabel material, delete material, and so on. And so before I actually give my students access to the book, I usually tell them what we're going to do the first week 
in this way. I'll relabel a chapter and I'll tell my students, look, go take a look at the table of contents. You'll see what we're doing the first week. Then look under the assignments. You'll see the readings and we're set to go. After my Tuesday and Thursday class, I'll hit the configure button and I'll sort of ease myself into the semester and say, and, and I'm an algorithms person, not an operating systems person. So I just wanna show you some features here, okay? I might move some material around like, okay, I teach operating systems. I know kind of how I wanna go through it. I know maybe that my students aren't gonna be able to, or I'm not gonna be able to get to this material. So I'll leave it in the book so my students can save it as a, as a PDF, right? Keep a copy of it just as if they had a, um, hard copy book and they didn't stick it in the bonfire and actually kept it. So I might label some chapters that I'm not gonna use. If I prefer, I could certainly just remove a chapter. If I just wanna remove security, I could, but I've taken to labeling things so the students can keep them. Similarly, if I've got sections that need to be done in a different order, I can do that. I can get rid of sections that I don't want, okay? I can also create my own material, which I'll show you how to do in a couple of seconds. And I can make material optional if I've got material that I think students don't need for a follow-up course. My better students will understand it and like to see it. Maybe I'll refer to it, but I'm not going to hold the students responsible for it, right? In deference to, you know, sort of my weaker and average students who, who you know, are struggling to get through the basics. Maybe they don't need it. I'll leave it in there. So, you know, they'll see that um, whatever chapter I was in, I apologize, will we'll be labeled as an optional chapter or an optional section. OK, so I can easily move things around, relabel things and do it on a weekly basis as I go through the course. OK, and then if I do want to add some of my own material, I have this really nice feature where I can create my own section. So nomenclature, we've got chapters, we've got sections. So if I want to create my own section, I could say, okay, this is Miller's new section. And I have a variety of types of content I can put in there. So I can put in some text, explain to my students what this section is all about. Okay, I can easily format it in you know, wide variety of ways. For those of you interested in uh, other books, potentially, I don't think you need this very much in an operating systems book, uh, but if you do need it for more algorithms oriented books, data structures, whatever, you can put LaTeX in here if you want to make sure that your math or any derivations that you want, you know, to lay out nicely, lay out nicely. You've got the ability to put multiple choice questions in here, so you can ask your students a question. And if it's the right answer, I can signify to the system that's correct and let the student know why that's correct compared to say an incorrect answer where I'll give the students an explanation of why this answer is incorrect compared to why that answer is wrong. Maybe I just need three. So, you know, here it is. I've got access to an easy previewer, simple previewer. Uh, putting videos in is pretty popular these days. So if I want to put some video in, I'll just grab a URL, like grab something from YouTube, right? So I'll grab a URL, plop this in here, right? Normally it'd be a URL of, you know, 30, 45 seconds of me uh, teaching. Let me just put that up front. So I'll put in a video trying to motivate my students for why this section is important or what's going on here, because I want to remove the noise that my students go through in a class going from an LMS to websites to books to whatever, whatever. I just want to make life easy for them so that they can just come to the class. Everything's in the book. I put my syllabus in the book. The reading problems are in the book. The Silver Shots text is in the book. The standard Silver Shots um, uh, end of chapter problems are in the book. Here's a section we just created, right? So if I do have something I wanna add, I can create a section there and I have the ability to then move that section to wherever it is that it belongs with that same configure button that I used previously, okay? So I can move things to wherever I need to move them. If there is material or commentary that I would like to add to something in the book, so maybe there's a section here 
And I think that my students, I'd like them to understand whatever, whatever about what's in some paragraph or what's in some figure. Then I have this note item up here. Okay, if I hit this note, I have the ability to put commentary into their book. All right now, it'll be marked as it's coming from me, so there's no confusion on the student's end. But I can put these notes anywhere I want. I have access to Markdown if you like Markdown. I don't know Markdown. <laughs> I'm an HTML person, so I'll use some HTML. I can put LaTeX in here if I want. Okay, anybody that's interested, I can show you how to do that at another point. Okay, I can use an iframe command, which is as easy as what I just did, copying and pasting, um, to put in a video. I can resize this video. And again, make sure that, Everyone, that this is in here. I can put it at the top of any section and, or anywhere I want in the section, trying to motivate my students, get them to understand what I'm doing, what, it's, what is important and whatever. Okay. I can also use these notes if I want. After I come back from a lecture, I can put in a note to myself and say, you know, that lecture didn't go so well today, whatever, whatever, and put click this box here. So this note will only be available to me and my teaching staff. And then when I go to use the book another semester, okay, I can use, and I own all the intellectual property rights, me personally as an instructor, to any new sections I create, any notes I create, any of that sort of stuff. And I can leave notes in here for myself if I want to carry over all the changes I made to sections, to chapters, to deleting, inserting, whatever. And I can leave notes in for me that the students can't see where I can say, look, remember last semester when you taught this, this lecture was a problem. Try something else, right? I can leave notes in to me or communicate with my TAs this way, pointing out to them, look, if you didn't get to class, when I went through this section, I ran into a bump, a hiccup in the road. I did this example. It didn't quite work out. Okay, so I have a way to easily keep track of that information for myself. And finally, the last thing I want to mention in terms of just doing a Reader's Digest version, a real brief overview of what these books are about, uh, is just show you that you do have access to a test bank. It's a multiple choice only set of questions. Okay, uh, Most of the sections have three, four, five, um, kind of on average sets of multiple choice questions that you can go and grab if you want. Okay, they're going to be, you know, some will be true, false, some will have four potential solutions, whatever. You do have the ability to take a look at a preview. And then if you want to use it, you've got two main options. You can download a Word file, in which case you can add open response questions, spin the questions around, whatever, whatever. Or you can download a QTI file, put it into your LMS and offer a lockdown browser version of this quiz, extra credit, homework, exam, whatever you want, okay? So that gets to, like I said, the, the Nichols tour of what the Zybook is in terms of this Silver Shots operating systems book that's just been introduced. Obviously, one of the authors graciously has agreed to spend some time today, and, and I saw that uh, Peter was answering questions in the chat, which thank you very much especially since I am not an operating systems person. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I'm sure the entire uh, uh, group of faculty who are here really appreciate you, you being here. So, Kim? Awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to answer a few questions verbally, just in case people weren't reading the chat, because I think they're good. Um, the first one is cost. So this is our standard Zybooks pricing. We do standard pricing across the board, which makes everything really simple. So our standard price is $58. That gets the student the subscription to the book, all this interactive content, the grade book, et cetera. It also allows them to keep each chapter as a PDF or print it themselves. Um, and then there's still print versions of the book available through Wiley. So there's lots of options, but your basic answer is $58. You can always work with your rep to figure out details of that. Second question was um, LMS integration. So Canvas, Blackboard, D2L, Brightspace. 
These all seamlessly integrate with an LMS. Students use a single sign-on. The assignment grades will flow over. We have documentation on how to do that. And we also have a specialist that can meet with you one-on-one -on -one to set that up. Um, so it's about 50-50. 50% of our users do that. 50% just use our Zybooks gradebook. So it's really your preference. But yes, it meets all those standards. We can do all that. Um, the other thing was about combining books. So this is another unique thing that Zybooks can offer. Uh, we showed you the customization, reordering. You can actually combine chapters of anything that we publish. And if you haven't looked at our library for a while, I highly recommend going to our catalog. We have expanded a lot in the last few years. So someone brought up the point that they use the OS Zybook and the challenge activities in there, you can actually combine those two books. So if those challenge activities, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, challenge activities are just more robust auto-graded homework. If that's a really important part of your class, you can actually take that from the OS Zy book. We can combine it with this Zy version, and then you just use that configure button and you drag and drop and kind of plop things in where you want. Hopefully that's not a permanent solution. We do hope to keep you, uh, you know, working on these Zy versions and possibly adding auto graded homework on our own with the authors. But that could be a solution for now if that's an important part to you. And all you do to make that happen is when you adopt your Zy book. Um, Russ, can you show the adopt Zy book on the welcome? Yeah. So, so I, I I jumped ahead of you and I apologize, Kim. But as oh, long okay. here, so just just so people understand, when Kim is saying and when I mentioned that you can combine books, here's a combined book that I had Zy books put together for me based on a course I typically teach, where you can notice some of you'll notice there's discrete structures material here. Now there's Python material here. There's programming assignments here. I like to make sure that all of my first semester freshmen understand that spreadsheets can do more than just create, uh, you know, word tables. So the students just see one book. They just see a right. book, and either you can have the Zybooks people order these chapters how you want, or you can just go into configure and order them you know, however you want to order them. So the students just see one book. Like, right. for example, this is a course I'm teaching this semester, CSE 4529. Well, there's a bunch of chapters, but don't bunch of different books in here. But this is what my students see. So the adopt a Zy book button that I'm hovering right here, this is where you could go in and I'll just grab two simple things here. So say you want to use this book. And then in addition to that book, maybe from the catalog, you want some other book to be combined with that. You just choose that other book. And here you go. You've now got whether you're using the auto graded programming assignments or not. Okay. And off you go. You've now got these two books here. Okay. C and algebra, whatever. I don't know what course that'd be, but but you've now just put these two books, these two Zy books into a book. If your combination is more restrictive, say you only want to use a couple of chapters from the other operating systems book and whatever, then you would just do this and work with your sales rep and send them an email and they'll, they'll get it all right. Because this adoption goes to your sales rep before it actually goes to the people who build it. And so they can intercede and say, okay, yeah, I know you just want these chapters from this book and these chapters from this. And maybe you even know the exact order you want them and they'll They'll forward that information and that book will be created for you within one to three days, give or take, uh, exactly the way you want. Yeah, it's great. And then it's one grade book. Like Russ said, it's one book to the students. So they don't even know that things came from multiple books. Um, and then if you have, let's say, like a syllabus or an outline of what you cover each week, that's the type of thing you'd send to your sales rep. And then we can have our creation team match up the chapters, um, figure out how to order it. It's not going to be perfect because they are two different books, right? Or three or four, however. So they're not meant to flow the same way, but people combine tons of our books and have made it work. It just might take a little creativity on our part, but we're happy to help with that. And then someone asked about the cost of this. It is not the cost of both Zy books. So it's not 58 for this one and 58 for this one. It is a very minimal add-on around $10, depending on how much you add, 
So again, you get that ability to make this custom Zy book without the custom textbook price. Um, and we have tons of professors that take advantage of that. So does anyone have any other? I know we did like very brief, but I yeah, there, make there's sure. a question that kind of flew by. Somebody was mentioning a oh. Slack channel or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, let me just mentioned there is this. Zybooks community. Yes. I guess here's the Kim. Do you want to speak more to it? But here's yeah. Here's so once you are a Zybooks user or adopter, and this is for any product, um, this is sort of new. So it's going to be in the top of your book. It's going to be called the Zy community, and we actually have a community manager named Julie who's kind of working on this. This is sort of like a Slack channel. It's a, a forum, if you will, for people professors using Zybooks to discuss things. So best practices, things they wish we had. Uh, Julie hosts a lot of like office hours. So she's actually doing one today for professors teaching Java. So it's just a small group of professors teaching Java with the Zybook and they're going to bounce ideas, challenges, feedback for our product team. So we are really investing in this community because all of this is really important to us, all of your ideas, all of your feedback. So that would be a great place. Um, to start those types of discussions. And like I said, once you adopt, you'll get access to that. And while I'm here, uh, the catalog, if you wanna see all things Zybooks is just zybooks.com slash catalog. Yes. So if you wanna go and look at, right? And because they don't publish in poetry and French <laughs> literature and whatever, right? It's not, not, it's not huge. <laughs> you can take a quick look and see what books are there. Once you have an account, you can look more easily, whatever. Uh, for those who like looking at research papers about, do I really believe this is more effective or not? There's this research, public research page, zybooks.com slash research. And it gives some of the data, the encapsulation of the results that Kim mentioned. Uh, but most importantly, for those of us who are scientists, like, I don't want to see that. Just, I want to see the papers. So here are the papers. Here are the conference and journal papers where the data came from, if you want to go and look at those. So it's here. They, they keep everything pretty open, which is nice. Yeah. And we're always working on new research, too. So that page is always updated with our newest, newest stuff. So as soon as we end, a survey is going to pop up. I'm going to put the link to the survey in the chat, too, because sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, but I am going to hang out for about 10 more minutes. I know we're technically at time, and I want to be really respectful of everyone's day. I think some of you are on spring break, which is so nice that <laughs> you decided to join us. Um, so well, we will hang around. So I want to make sure everyone's questions get answered. Thank you, Peter, for in, um, interacting in the chat. That is such a help for that content stuff. Um, some people had specific questions. So if you put a specific question in the chat, I wrote it down and I will, I will either get in contact with you or your sales rep will. So all those customization or ISBNs for the bookstore, stuff like that, we will definitely follow up. But just to hold me accountable, make sure you put that on your survey too, so that I just have record of it. I think I wrote it down.